Now we're moving on to the next stage of our tutorial, which is making our nose and our eyes. So we're going to start off by making the nose and I'm going to measure some brown merino roving. It measures about 11 inches in length and it's about half an inch in its width. Now we're going to use the same technique that I showed you in our masterclass earlier on. So we're going to hold the wool in our dominant hand and with our non-dominant we're going to fold the top over then we're going to fold it to the right and then we're going to fold it down and then we're going to fold it into that triangular shape that I showed you when we were making um, triangular noses for animals in the previous lessons. So we're going to get to a stage whereby I'm just going to straighten that out a second so it's nice and even so keep making sure your roving is straight don't let it twist over when you're folding but we want to get to a stage whereby it's about a centimetre in thickness, this nose. So roughly about a centimetre. So once you get to that stage, you can stop. And it's about two and a half centimetres by two and a half centimetres at the moment in terms of its diameter. So I'm just going to fold those loose ends over, tuck them out of the way. And then I'm just going to felt that down to hold everything in place. And I'm just using my fine twisted needles for this. You don't need to use a medium needle. And then once I've felted things down to anchor it down so it doesn't unravel, I'm just gonna start to felt down the sides. And what we want to create here is a triangular shape, but very much like in our previous tutorial with noses, we're creating the rounded corners. So we don't want those corners to be pointy hard corners because that wouldn't look like a normal natural nose. We want the corners to be soft angles. So I'm just felting down those angles and getting them nice and soft. And I'm doing that by using my meat, my, sorry, my fine needles side by side and I'm felting at an angle downwards. Don't felt directly in a horizontal motion because you'll stab yourself in the finger. And then if you look, I'm actually holding that merino wall down with my forefinger and I'm using my nail to hold it down. I'm not holding it down with my finger like you'd hold you know, a piece of paper down to stop it from blowing away. And what this does is a bit like when a chef is chopping an onion, it just protects your fingers from being stabbed. So I'm going to keep rotating this and checking it. That looks good. So I'm going to place this in the middle of where we created our muzzle earlier on. So it's going slap bang in the middle with the point going upwards and the flat side going downwards because hedgehogs, their noses have the flat side going downwards. So what I'm going to do now is take my medium uh, twisted star and I'm going to hold that in place again with my forefinger using my nail and I'm just going to felt around the peripherals of that nose, felting around the sides. And again, this is just to anchor it in, into position. Now don't worry if you find that as you're felting it, you suddenly discover that it's on a bit of a, a wonk and it's not quite dead centre in your hedgehog's face. You can just adjust it like I am here. I'm just pushing it, using my fingernails to push it across. I'm holding it in position with my finger and then I'm just felting it down again. And just keep doing that until it's nice and solid and it's not going anywhere. Don't worry about felting down the middle at the moment because we'll do that in a little bit. As long as it's felted down on the sides, that's the, that's the main thing. We don't want to felt down to the middle too much because it will flatten it. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating an arc shape on that flat piece of nose at the bottom. I'm just felting upwards, again on a bit of a diagonal, so sort of down in a downward motion to create that kind of arc shape and just keep turning him, felting the corners in, getting it nice and secure. And you'll notice I've got a bit of a gap where I've felted it a bit too much in one side 
and I'm going to sort that out in a moment and all we need to do to correct that is just take a little piece of brown merino wool place it over the top and just fill that little section in there where we've got that small hole so it's not a big deal if you have anything similar that's what we do and you can do the same with eyes as well when you're adding eyes in and you've got any areas that are a bit bare that kind of show through your core wall just get a bit more of the color you're using and fill it in it's a bit like using um, a coloring pen or something like that except you're using wool so i'm just continuing to felt in and i'm pushing the brown merino in now so i'm pushing it towards itself so that the nose is decreasing in size but the volume is increasing, so I'm getting a thicker nose. And that's creating a nice 3D dimension to the sculpture. What we don't want is to have a 2D look, so everything looks flat and uninteresting. That's not what we're looking for here. What we're looking for is some nice 3D dimensions, lots of shapes and angles to our 3D piece to make it look really realistic and interesting to look at. So I apologise, I've gone off camera a bit here, but I'm still just using my needle in that kind of diagonal downwards motion to push that wall down, ensuring that I'm pulling my needle out in the same direction that I'm putting it in. And we don't need to worry too much about a fine needle here because the fox sheet wall is incredibly forgiving because it's got that very um, high micron number and because it's so lofty and it's got a lot of variegation in it, it's got a lot of um, different colours, it's just very forgiving with the needle. So when I'm using my even my medium needle in it, you're not really getting any indentation showing. It just kind of disappears very easily. So what I do find though is it just needs that, a bit more felting to get things to stay in place. But even so, you, you get a very kind of nice, clean finish with a kind of a bit of fluff so it looks quite natural. So I'm just going to take a bit of merino brown roving like I mentioned a moment ago. I'm just going to roll it between my fingers and I'm just going to pop it into the area where I've got that little that little divot that's occurred and I'm just going to use my needle to felt that into place. So it's looking nice and nice and neat. And again just do it around the sides of the nose don't worry too much about the top of the nose at the moment. I'm just moving it, making sure everything looks nice and symmetrical and pushing the nose up. So that looks good. So what we're going to do next is we're going to start thinking about where we're going to place our eyes. And the best way to do this is to use our fingers. So what I want to do here is just use my forefingers. I'm just going to press into where I want my eyes to be, where it looks natural for my hedgehog. So I think this looks quite good. I'm going to probably pop them a bit lower down once I actually add the merino in to give my hedgehog that slightly younger look. But what I'm doing here is I'm just using my medium needle and I'm just going to felt two holes which are going to form our eye sockets into the wall and that's where we're going to place our brown merino wall. Now this can take a little bit of time um, so be patient but you want to get to a point where the eye socket depth is at least a centimetre in depth um, because you want to create again that 3D dimension and if you go too shallow, it's going to look very 2D, very linear, and it's not going to look as interesting or as, I don't want to say realistic because it's not going to look like an actual real hedgehog. We're not doing it to scale, but it's going to look like something that could be, you know, could come to life at night and kind of sort of creep around in a cute way and steal your biscuits. So... I'm just going to keep felting it down. So I really like creating things that, especially as I create predominantly for children, items that do have that kind of almost realism to them. So a bit like Toy Story, or if anyone's old enough to remember the Christmas toy, which was that Jim Henson uh, 
Christmas film that was made with with uh, Rugby Tiger and it all the toys come to life in the children's nursery. It was kind of pre-Toy Story and I like to kind of create my animals with that kind of look in mind so they look like they could just come to life. Mm. They look super magical. That's the look I always go for. And the litmus test is my my girls if they think oh yeah that looks like it could come to life at any moment mummy. I know I've uh, I've kind of got it just about there. So just keep felting away. Gradually we're going to get there. Don't think it needs too much more now. Obviously the denser the wall is, the, the firmer you made your ball when we started out, the trickier this will be. And that's why you want the squish to it because you want to be able to manipulate the wall to create those facial shapes. So I'm happy with that. I'm happy that the eye sockets are deep enough. So I'm going to take some brown merino wool next. And I'm just going to tear off a small slither. So you don't want anything too large. I think that's too big there. Let's just take a bit more off. Perfect. And I'm just going to roll that between my fingers until I get a ball shape. And then I'm just going to do the same with the second piece. And what we're doing here, when we're rolling the wool between our fingers, what we're doing is we are using the heat from our hands to help to um, muddle all those fibres together so they stay together. I'm just going to take a bit more off for this second eye. It's just a bit smaller than the other. And a good way of checking that they're both the same kind of size is feel them between your thumbs at the same time. And if they feel and look about the same, you're pretty much there. So I'm happy with those. So I'm going to pop my first one in and I'm just going to use my medium needle again and I'm just going to poke that in and I'm going to just go from the centre and then just work my way round the circumference of the brown eye into the socket. And what we're doing as we're stabbing that brown merino roving into the eye socket it's contracting, it's getting smaller because we're pushing it into the hole. And what you can do if the shape's not quite as circular as you'd like, just use your needle very carefully in a sideways motion to just stab it um, into the desired shape that you're looking for. But what we want initially before we start shaping our eye is just that round spherical finish. So the same with the second eye, pop it in the middle and stab it down. And you can be quite kind of rough with this within reason. Obviously you don't want to break your needle, but stab it in quite firmly because we want it to decrease in size quite a bit so that when we manipulate it shortly, we're kind of left with a kind of a, an eye that's the right size for the model what we don't want is um, a massive eye if we went if we weren't to felt the brown down enough and started shaping it the brown would firstly be um, too loose so it would kind of leave holes and it would kind of look very loose in the eye socket but secondly you'd end up with a very large eye and it would look quite unnatural well depending on what you're going for obviously but I like to get it as tight as I can initially and then once we've got it nice and tight and we've got that kind of fox sheep that's kind of protruding around the sides of the brown eye then we can start shaping it and it gives a nice natural look. So I'm just giving that nose a bit of a stab starting to shape that and bending it into place. So it's all about manipulating the wool with your hands as well to get it to where you want it to be. So I'm just felting that in a bit more. And what I'm doing now is I'm starting to think about where I want to place the point of my eye. And I'm going to go for the classic um, eye that we did in our masterclass initially. So once I've got everything nice and tight, what we're going to do is very carefully, we're going to create a point going inwards on a horizontal um, for the eye. So it helps to kind of just manipulate the nose and things in place so you can kind of gauge what looks good 
for the eye as you shape it. So what I'm gonna do is take my medium needle again and I'm just gonna push very carefully in an upwards direction to create that point on an angle. And when you're doing this, I mean, obviously you can choose um, whatever you want your eye to look like. You might decide that you want to do more of a kind of a, a bulbous eye or you want to do more of a female eye. But when you do it, um, always just be very careful of your fingers when you're using your needle in that horizontal way. Once you've kind of gauged where you want that shape to sit, what you can do then is you can move your hedgehog or your sculpture into a position on your felting mat whereby it's kind of against the felting mat as you're pushing your needle in and you're unlikely to stab yourself. Now, the reason I'm doing it like this is purely so you can you can see how I'm working and you can see the shape I'm creating. But um, you may want to put your finger gloves on for this part just to protect your fingers as well. So I'm going to go for the same shape on the other side and then it's just checking to make sure that they're both symmetrical. But don't worry if they're not, it's not a problem. The beauty of needle felting is that we can correct, we can correct our mistakes very easily. So if, like here, you can see that one eye does look very different to the other eye, what I can do is I can manipulate that fox sheep wool into a position where it does look like the other eye. So you can see here, I'm just going to push it up again on an angle and a slightly different angle to get it looking the same. Obviously, you need to hold, I would recommend once you've done it very slowly and you've felted that angle into place and you know where it is, turning your sculpture so that it's down on the mat and your needle is going in towards the mat, not in towards your hands like I'm doing here in a very precarious way. But I'm just showing you in this way so that you can see um, how I'm using the needle and um, how the wool is being moved around with the needle to create that shape around the eye. So I'm just manipulating the fox sheep wool now and I'm just thinking about creating some shape within the fox sheep as well. So creating more sort of a shelf if you like around the eye which is kind of creating the cheek, the cheek of the hedgehog. And what you'll find as you're shaping the eyes and creating that sort of deep eye socket, naturally you start to create more of a snout and the cheeks of the hedgehog. It just kind of naturally occurs as you start putting in those facial features. It's quite satisfying and then you can pick on things. So you can kind of see here where the sort of the, at the bottom of the eyes, I've got that kind of nice, um, I don't know how to describe it really, kind of almost, yeah, it's like a sort of shelf area where obviously the, um, the snout's sticking out and just kind of felting that a bit more and creating more shape around that area just to give your sculpture more character. Down, so it looks almost a bit sad um, with the kind of the outer side of the eye just kind of on an angle, if that makes sense. And then you just want to keep manipulating it until you're happy. So whilst you don't want your eyes to be massive, you also don't want to make them too small because in a moment we're going to be adding in um, some white to give the impression of pupils and light shining on the eyes. So we don't want the area to be too small, otherwise we won't be able to get that in. So just be cautious of that. But like I said, you don't want them to be massive. I'd say that these eyes are about a centimetre sort of in height by about um, probably about a centimetre in just over a centimetre in width. It's difficult to gauge because they're on an angle. But if you kind of work to those kind of dimensions, you can't really go wrong. So just really working that outer corner and it can take about 10 minutes to kind of get to a, 
stage where you're happy with the shape but just be patient and if you do go wrong just go back and just re-manipulate the wall back to where you had it before so I'm just kind of pressing my eyes in stabbing that wall down because what can happen when you're manipulating the wall around the brown merino it can cause the brown merino to get a bit loose so I'm just re-stabbing it and re-securing that in place and continuing to shape just keep giving the face a squeeze until you're happy. So what we're going to do next is we're going to be adding some white to the eye to give the illusion of pupils. So I'm just going to tear off a very small section and like we did in our eyes masterclass we're just going to take very very tiny pieces of wool and we, we can always build up on these and add to it so don't worry if it's initially not enough. Um, I'd say that those may be a little bit on the large side, I think we just take a little bit away just to make them a bit smaller and then you just want to use the heat from your hands to roll those very small pieces of white wool bats into a ball like we have done previously and then I'm going to set them I think sort of so that the eyes look like they're looking directly at us. So not high up, so they look, they're looking upwards or low down, um, but just kind of somewhere in the middle, but towards the nose, looking towards the nose. So I'm just going to take a little bit more white so that the second ball is a similar size to the first one. And I'm just going to check the feel of them like we did with the brown earlier. They feel about right. So I'm just going to set them into place a bit more for that one and this is very much um, personal preference in terms of how big you make your pupils um, if you're making um, a very young childlike eye you might want to go for a very large white pupil but for the purposes of this sculpture I'm just going to go for something that's um, a little bit smaller and a bit more natural looking so I'm just going to place them into the rough position that I want them there and the nice thing with placing the eyes sort of towards the nose, so sort of into the inner corner of the eye, is that it then gives the appearance that your sculpture, if you're making, obviously making an animal or a person, is actually looking um, at you. So it kind of gives that kind of realistic, again, realistic look to it and quite a personal look if it's looking directly at you. So I quite like to do that with my sculptures as opposed to having them looking away. Um, I don't think it draws the person looking at your art in as much. Um, and you can see here where the white's going that already it kind of gives the impression that uh, our hedgehog is looking directly at us. So that's where I like to place them, but you can go with what you prefer. So I'm just felting that into place, felting it down around the circumference of the whites of the eye until it contracts into a smaller white dot. So you could leave it at this stage where it is now if you wanted to, but I'm just going to make it a bit smaller. And the other thing you want to bear in mind is whilst we want it to be sort of towards the nose inwards, we want a little bit of brown just on that outer edge still to show through. So you've got um, some differenti differentiation, that's not a word, um, there's, diff there's a difference between the, the white and the fox sheep, you've got that brown wool separating it. So I'm just going to do the same with the other eye and then keep checking it to make sure that it's still in the same position as the first one we just felt it in and just keep going until you've got to a similar stage. And then what I'm doing here is I'm just using, like we did in our masterclass, just using the needle to kind of push that white wool into a circular shape. So using that needle and a kind of a, a horizontal, sort of semi-horizontal diagonal, if that's such a thing, but kind of pushing downwards on the diagonal into the white wool to kind of shape it like I am here, you see. You might want to do this very slowly. There you go. So you can see I'm just pushing that white wool in there so you can see the brown on the outer part of the eye. 
keep going until they're about the same size. So I'm just going to go a bit more on the first one we made because it's just a little bit larger than the second one. And this is a good time to maybe take a photo and just check to see that everything's looking nice and symmetrical. Because like I've said before, with the naked eye, it can be a bit tricky to spot when things aren't quite symmetrical, whereas in a photo, it's a, it's a lot easier. I don't know the reasons why. I'm sure there's some kind of science behind it. So I'm just shaping the eye a little bit more, getting that point on the diagonal kind of going upwards a bit more. And I'm just gradually shaping the eye with my medium needle, manipulating that brown wall by using my needle on an angle and also manipulating the fox sheet wall on the outside of our eye. But just be careful not to felt it too much so that you end up flattening that fox sheet wall on the peripherals of your brown eye. Just kind of felt it a little bit, um, but just be very careful not to go too crazy with it, otherwise it can end up looking a bit 2D, which we don't want. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take some more of the white Gotland wool bats and I'm just going to take some very small slithers and then I'm going to roll it between my fingers in a sausage shape and I'm just going to place it at the bottom. If you remember our cute eye trick that I showed you in the masterclass we're doing the same thing here with our hedgehog so we're just putting some white at the bottom of the eye to create more character and more of a cute look to the hedgehog and you can go as thin or as thick as you want to the thicker you go with this technique the more cartoony it will look so it's kind of getting that balance of all you know what, what look you are trying to achieve when you're doing this but you might want to get depending on how thick you want it you may want to use some embroidery scissors just to snip the edges off if you've got a bit too much wool there. So I'm just shaping and remember that with this technique the closer to the pupil the finer the white needs to be and then the further away is the thicker it gets. So the, that outer edge of the eye furthest from the pupil that's where we want that white to be thickest. So I'm just going to felt that end in and get it nice and secure a nice laying nice and flat against that eye and sort of into the depth of the socket and what you also might want to do is felt some of this white onto the actual fox sheet wall so you're kind of going right on the edge of the eye but if you felt felt the, the if you felt it into the fox sheet wall you're um, not reducing the size of the brown as much that you've already added in um, so it's kind of creating the appearance of an even larger eye. But obviously ensure that you're kind of keeping that 3D look to it. Don't let everything get flattened down while you're felting um, in terms of the, the fox sheep around the eye. Keep that socket nice and deep. So I'm going to do the same with the other eye now. Take my, my thin strip, just place it. On the bottom and then just felt that down and take your time like I always say take your time don't rush it so I'm just using my medium needle to do this you don't need to use a particularly fine needle because once it's all compacted tightly you're not going to notice sort of needle holes and things like that but you just want to get it nice and tight into the eye and once again, if it's not quite the shape you want, you can just move that wall. You can use your needle kind of on a downwards diagonal to press it down or across to get that shape that you're looking for. So I can see here that I'm going to want to felt down around the pupil into the that sort of the corner of the eye a bit more, the inner corner of the eye. Just getting that outer corner nice and flat and secure. And then you can build on it. So if you, th you think, oh, actually, I want to have a bit more of a, a larger white area, just add a bit more wool. It's not a problem. But it's always better to start with less than too much. So I'm just going to take my fine 
double needle pen now. And I'm just going to give this a felt around the nose area and start getting that nice and shaped, getting that ski slope nose felted in. And I'm just pinching the wool and then felting it down. And we'll use this technique an awful lot, pretty much through every tutorial that we do. We're going to be using this technique of manipulating the wool with our fingers and then felting it into position. I find that's the best way to create faces, to create shapes and definition in a face. So just giving it a squeeze. And that slightly kind of like almost slightly cross-eyed look that he has just adds to that kind of that cute factor that we look, we're looking for with our hedgehog. Just keep pressing. And then I'm just going to give the top a bit more of a felt. We're going to be putting some spines on here in a moment. So don't worry too much about shaping the top half just to get that kind of firmness in there and just really create that shape with that nose and what I'm doing I'm just pinching about an inch and a half from the end of the nose and I'm pushing it upwards so I'm creating that kind of ridge or that kind of bow shape that I'm sort of felting here and it's just creating again more definition and shape to the face obviously all faces are different no face is truly symmetrical unless you're kind of like a supermodel or something and everything has little quirks and indentations and it's nice to incorporate that into a piece of felted art because it makes it look more realistic and more characterful whilst we still want you know things to look symmetrical from this you know side by side we don't want one eye dramatically bigger than the other it is nice to kind of add a few kind of lines and crevices to the sculpture and make it just look a bit more authentic. Oh, he's escaped already. He's off. So I'm just going to keep going over this, just compacting that top half just to get it a bit more of a medium kind of thickness so that when I add the spines in a moment, it uh, felt nice and firmly into the top of the hedgehog. I'm just going to go around a bit more with my pen and just get some more shape around that eye area, getting that nice deep socket. And it's nice to change between the double and the single needle. The single needle is obviously great for more detailed work. Um, and then the double needles needle is good for when you're sort of wanting to do a larger surface area. A lot of people use three needles, but I prefer to use two as I've mentioned before purely because I feel like I've got more control over where that needle's going um, in terms of how I'm shaping a face um, just having those two needles side by side helps me to create things like eyebrows more easily whereas if I had the three needles um, it wouldn't be you wouldn't be able to do that so what I'm doing now is I'm just adding eyebrows in and I'm going for the kind of the inverted eyebrow, sort of the upside down eyebrow, just to give him more of a confused and slightly bemused look. It's kind of like, what's going on guys, kind of look. So I'm just kind of initially felting a rough idea of where I want it to go. And then once I'm happy, just giving it a good old stab into place. And what you could do is, on the inner part of the eyebrow, so towards the nose, the inner part, you could make it a bit thicker, a bit of a heavier indentation, just to create that more natural brow look. So I'm just going to go in again here. And this can take some time because you want to kind of get rid of those sort of those lines. Can you see those lines forming where I'm just felting it down? So you want to get it nice and deeply felted. So I'm just creating a slightly wider top part, like I said a moment ago, on the inner part of the brow. Again, it just gives it that more natural appearance. And you'll find once you start making sculptures, you'll you'll start felting them and then you'll see something and you think, oh, I'll just give that a little, a little tightening, a little felt. And um, sometimes it's a bit hard to put the needles down and know when to stop. I have to make myself stop, otherwise I'll just keep going. So just keep pushing that nose upwards into that ski slope kind of position. 
it can take quite a while because the the fine needles kind of as they're felting it's more of a gradual process so it can take a take a few minutes to get something to stay into the position you want it to but that's fine because it just means that you've got more flexibility in terms of where to stop because you don't want to do it too quickly and then not be happy with it it's better to do it gradually and then get to a point where you think actually yeah I'll do a little bit more but that's enough now so just giving his face a bit of a squeeze getting that all nice and tightly felted in with those fine needles and he looks good let's move on to the mouth <laughs> 